Photography chat with Merlin. Photography chat with Merlin. How's it going, man? Welcome to uh, another episode of Photography Chat, uh, Season 3, Episode 25, and we've got uh, Min Wu Lee with us. Hey, thanks, Merlin. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem, man. <laughs> you want to take a moment to uh, introduce yourself to everyone? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, I, my name's Min. Um, I just... Uh, Graduated a uh, school from BCIT um, in my early 30s, and I grew up in the Lower Mainland, and do a lot of still photography in my spare time, and, and that's how I met Merlin <laughs> online. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, off, off the Instagrams, right? Yeah. yeah I think it was through yeah. uh, Northern Film Collective that uh, we crossed paths there. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we saw your work uh, come through for uh, for volume one, and uh, I think we shared a bunch of your stuff too. Um, and uh, yeah. Zenya says, "Congrats, congrats on graduation." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, man. And also, uh, they said, "Pow," and then Dirty Mike sixty nine said, "The boys." <laughs> <laughs> Quite, that's quite the username, yeah. So, how how did you get uh, going with stills and stuff? Um, my dad was like an amateur photographer. Okay, There's always a camera around, and like he had a video cameras, camcorders, and stuff too. Um, so like amateur stuff, still amateur in terms of like. I mean, I've been I've been paid for photo shoots. I've been paid for photography, but I, I wouldn't say it's my full time. Never really been like a full time bread maker. But um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I, I think since I was a kid, would be fair to say. But seriously, shooting stills and like owning a DSLR and doing a little bit more, taking it a little bit more seriously, probably only like. In the last four years, five years, almost. It's still kind of like new. And the best thing for me is um, getting to a point with it when you're confident with your abilities, but also realizing like the more you learn, the more detailed stuff there is that you find out about that you don't know, that you have to learn more of. (laughs) So it's just like constant, nonstop. But um, you have to really like, scratch away at the surface at the beginning and like really, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing the last few years. I'd say scratching away at the surface. Yeah. I kind of feel like there's never ending learning when you start going down the rabbit hole with like any hobby. But, um, I mean with mm-hmm. photography, it's just like, it's such a slippery slope depending on what you want to get into. Um, cause you start with one thing and then you end up, wondering why you have no money and all of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Everything is like ridiculously expensive. <laughs> but. It keeps it interesting. Yeah. So what, what was the, the film camera that got you, uh, got you going originally? Um, the one I remember a lot is my dad had a Pentax zoom, like, point and shoot 35 mil and then I ended up buying a zoom 90 some similar one zoom 90 WR I think it's like a weather resistant has like a little like um, funny remote thing that slides on and out of the side oh, that's a little cool. uh, IR remote for like auto uh, it's kind of gimmicky but um, I kind of got that sort of trying to um, reconnect with that camera I guess <laughs> that I played with a lot as a kid um, but my first 35 mil that I bought was a Pentax Emmy, um, aperture priority, um, 35 mil. It's like super tiny. 
a girl recommended it from Bo Photo. Um, she's really nice. Is and that uh, Nicole? I don't think so. I, I don't remember her name, though. Well, all the um, folks at Bo are really friendly. Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. But yeah, they're they're really nice there. Um, and I still have that camera. Um, bought a bunch of different Pentaxes after that. And some Canons. Lots of like, I like SLRs. Still have never owned a rangefinder. But um, yeah, Pentax Emmy definitely was the first one for me. That's awesome. Um, what's been some of your favorite stuff to shoot? Um, I mean, portraits, portraits are always nice, they're always interesting, um, but cars, I like any hunk of metal that's got cool texture or, um, cool colors or lines, um, yeah, I'd say definitely cars is a big thing for me, um, and... My parents actually uh, requested like a landscape a while ago, like a print. So I've been kind of on the on the hunt for a good print. So I've been doing a lot of landscape, but haven't done any like super serious scanning yet. Um, so that's coming for me. I'm really excited because I haven't done anything beyond like a 16 by 20 before. Um, that's pretty cool. I, I definitely noticed in, in the sample uh, photos you sent over that, um, that some of the colors are phenomenal, but I like the mood in some of them, like especially that um, the green porch one that almost looks like haunted. Like uh, where, where did you yeah. find that? Like what's, what's the story behind that one? Um, so that's awesome that you say that and thanks because um, horror genre is something that I, was terrified of <laughs> as a kid and then um, grew more and more in love with it as an adult and, and then even more so as like from like a filmmaking perspective as I started to learn more about filmmaking and visual storytelling and like sound in cinema and just like horror is really 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 cool um, so that was actually downtown and I was just walking around sometimes I'll just I, I feel like guilty for no reason sometimes when I'm walking around with my camera because I like have like kind of big camera bag and um, medium format camera and like a tripod and sometimes I just feel like sketchy <laughs> like <laughs> paranoid kind of anyways that was downtown I think near um, uh, Rob just off of Robson it was like all these like big high rises and then just that like really weird house and then like the weird different color temperature lighting and stuff love the color and so um that was on sticks and probably like i don't i don't remember i stopped writing stuff down but it, it, i do always when it's nighttime photography and it's a still subject um which is one of my favorite ways to shoot uh it's always a cable release on a steady base and then whenever I'm metering, I usually give it the whole, after a certain point, there's double the time for, um, yeah, like reciprocity you know, for like the, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Loss of sensitivity. So, um, it's always fun to see how those turn out too. Cause some of that is probably color shifting. Um, and then I'll correct what I want and sort of get weird tones out of it. And, I just, I, I really liked how moody it looks because it looks like something out of like a 60s horror or something like that. Yeah, so that actually, so one of the things I'm trying to like keep in mind with any of the medium format stuff is because one day when I can afford it, I want to get like really, really high res drum scans or something like spend the money like if I can uh, and get something really crazy out of a print and I wanted to do something really large and I really want to make sure those feel like environments that you can step into when you're like viewing it instead of just um what i typically end up doing is but anyway yeah that's one thing that i'm always trying to kind of be mindful of that yeah i, I also noticed uh your black and whites are great too um but i was drawn a bit more to the color so i i picked uh mostly color um out of the samples you sent me but um the one black and white that i really liked was that like faceless portrait that almost looks like 
if the grudge like cleaned up a little bit yeah. and it's like sitting yeah, for, yeah. like a school photo or something. Yeah, totally. No, that was, that was a friend, um, a classmate, uh, Caitlin and, uh, I started to put her hair above her and she just did it. It was nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> just fun studio stuff that we got to do and play time at school. basically. So. That's pretty cool. So what's been one of the more like memorable or fun projects you've worked on so far? Um, photography wise, I, I can't really pick because I haven't really been like commissioned. Oh. Well, well, not even really commissions, like, but just like um, things that you've enjoyed doing. Um, anything at nighttime like that greenhouse photo, which I don't have a name for, but yeah, any, anything like that, just it's alone time. It's therapy time. It's like meditation time. It's uh, disconnection time, um, reconnection time. It's practicing time. It's like, it's everything. It's, it, that's why I think I've really, really gone like full tilt with photography as like a, a passion. Um, since it kind of happened. Um, it gives me a lot. I've always been like a hobby thirsty kid and like um, love picking up different hobbies and doing different, trying different sports and all that kind of stuff. And like have like energy off the wall sort of thing. And then, um, yeah, it, it, it sort of gives me back enough when I put into it, like some things that I put enough, I feel like I put enough into, you don't get enough back because I'm not, maybe not good at that. Maybe it's like a sign, like, I don't know, this one's not for you. Um, yeah but I didn't feel that with photography. I didn't feel that resistance. Um, I felt just like, okay, challenge and then learning and then challenge and then learning and challenge. It's just it's a good thing. So, yeah. Nice. Well, and as long as you're feeling challenged and, and you're learning something, then that's good. Cause you're, you're sort of progressing, but um, yeah, it sounds like, fun. is there anything Hopefully. that you're like planning on, on working on or like um, some interesting stuff you've um, had in mind? That, that, um, for stills, um, stills or, or even video, like uh, in anything that, uh, creatively you've been working on. Um, well, I'm doing some stuff right now for a job, like a day job that is very interesting and I like it a lot. Um, it's not like, my own stories and stuff. But for now, I think for like, so since I graduated school, it's kind of just like, I feel like it's time to work and I'm just going to be busy working until I can sort of put together enough to focus on my own passion projects and stuff. But, um, yeah, I think I'm excited to do landscapes. Um, I've been kind of exploring Canada. Like I checked out uh, a new province I'd never been to before uh, this year. And um, which yeah, province anyway, was that? Where, uh, uh, where where'd you go off to? Oh, I, I went to uh, Manitoba. I checked out Winnipeg, um, and it was it was good, cool, just seeing different environments. And um, I kind of sparked an idea of, of definitely. <laughs> going through the country and, and checking out all the major cities and then checking out rural areas. And I want to get some sort of uh, project going with that. Um, that would be stills for sure on film for sure. <laughs> and probably a lot of tri X 400 and um, color. I don't know what I would shoot next, but um, I like portrait 800. I, I, I don't know why I always go back to it. Portrait 800 too is because it's a, it's a different formula than the rest of the portrait too. I, I think someone was saying mm. that it's like related to the vision three, um, cinema stuff. So it's like uh, okay. just a little bit different than the rest of the portrait. I could be wrong. Um, but you know, that's, I think that's why it's a little different, but yeah, the portrait 800 mm. is, is a cool film. I, I like, I, I've definitely like fuck around with that stuff. Why Winnipeg? What what drew you to Manitoba out of all of the provinces in our country? Oh, I, I was seeing a friend 
and also wanted to go somewhere cold and also I don't know I just wanted to go I've always been asked like everyone's like why did you go there but um yeah it's just it's, it's one on a list of many places I just want to go to all the different provinces I've only ever hopped around like Vancouver well BC I've been through BC I came to BC when I was a kid um so I've been through BC but um, like Alberta, I haven't seen enough of, and it's right next door. Um, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, everyone says there's nothing to see, but I guarantee there is. Just have to look. Um, yeah. And then, like, yeah, Ontario, I've been to, but want to see more of. So, I don't know. I just want to go through all the provinces. It just, it was cheap flight. Need somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I no 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 like um, shade on on Winnipeg. I actually like <laughs> I, I used to have to spend a lot of time traveling to different Canadian cities for work, and uh, mm-hmm. I always kind of found Winnipeg interesting. Like it's it they have a lot of social issues there, and there there's a lot of uh, problematic stuff that uh, they need to be working on there. But um, I always found it an interesting place, and um, a lot of creatives there too. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was really cool seeing, like, it's just, it's just a different, I'm always just, I'm down for something different. If it's a different environment, it just, like, gets me, like, it helps reset me, sort of, because I'm exploring and it's new and it's not redundant and old and the same thing over and over. So, it's nice. But, cool old buildings, man. A lot of cool old buildings and just snow like you don't have it here. If you hate snow, then like whatever. <laughs> yeah, w- wait, but. so earlier you said you wanted to go somewhere cold. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Do you enjoy the cold uh-huh. more than regular temperatures? Or Yeah, I mean, obviously I don't want to be dying of cold, but I like the cold over the extreme heat, I think. And the cold cool. means no allergies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I have, that, I have like bad point. like summer allergies. <laughs> that's fair. I, I can so I, I can understand that now. That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, allergies suck. <laughs> and then apparently did did you see that there's like a weather notice on for like this weekend that we're supposed to get into like the thirties here in, in like the lower mainland Vancouver area? Oh, okay. Now my my mom mentioned something like that earlier. She's like, It's gonna be hot this weekend. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, okay. check on your pals if you're in the lower mainland. And, uh, okay, SPF, everybody. SPF. Or just stay the hell out of the sun. Yeah, stay out of the sun. Be careful if you're going to Best Buy or in the other places to get air conditioners. Don't get into, like, you know, riot brawls or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's going to be on high edge or something. But... Oh, it, was, it was crazy last year. Just even trying to find, like, a fan or something was, like... Yeah, you, you get to a shop and there'd be like one or two left and it would be like a battle to the death with some people and it's just like whatever it's just a fucking fan. Like I know I'm hot, but like I'm I don't want to fight you about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it it gets crazy. I think there must be like I don't know, maybe they don't stock it all year and then they just there's just like no window there. It just it gets the weather just hits and then now the ACs are available so everyone's going or something like that. Yeah, I think it's I like know. a seasonal thing because I, I don't imagine they sell a lot of air conditioners in like the fall or winter time in, in Canada. Um, yeah. yeah. We're talking Home Depot and Canadian tires and stuff at this point. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, but I, I totally would recommend <laughs> if you get a chance to um, drive across the country. Like it's um, it's a hell of a country and it's mm-hmm. a hell of a drive. Like I still have yeah. yet to do the complete drive yet so i've only done vancouver to toronto and i've made it out to montreal but i haven't ventured past mm-hmm. montreal yet so i can't say right. i've been coast to coast yet i still have a few more provinces to get through i see i see okay yeah like i, I want to go to like nova scotia um never been to nova scotia my cousin out there like doing ceramics and um teaching there i think still definitely want to go out all the way as well drive would be the way to do it for sure just a bunch of camera gear <laughs> and like uh, and a car <laughs> maybe the odd airbnb 
Yeah, exactly. Give yourself lots of time because um, Canada is a fucking huge country. Like it's, um, <laughs> I've done yeah. I've done the Vancouver to Toronto in like three days, but that sucked. Like I, I wouldn't oh, take it that, that sounds, quick. Sounds a little nonstop. A little bit. Like there's, you, you stop for sleep, but it's not very long and it's not very good. <laughs> And be careful if you yeah, end up I, in Wawa because um, most people kind of end up there if you don't manage to make it all the way to uh, Thunder Bay, I think it is. Um, the only motel I, I would recommend in Wawa is the Wawa Motor Inn. The Wawa Motor Inn? Yeah. Okay. Wawa is um, a tiny little Wawa? shithole town in northern Ontario. <laughs> But it's like, it's okay. right right on the highway, like right in the like Lake Superior area, and um, okay. almost every time I've made the track back and forth, uh, we've ended up in Wawa, and uh, it's like mm-hmm. it's inescapable. Like it's just there's something about Wawa. <laughs> it's drawing you in. It's like Stranger Things vibes. Exactly. Yeah. It's <laughs> it kind of, and they do have. Um, the world, one of the world's largest goose statues there. It's a huge fucking Canada goose. Looks very angry. And, um, like, like made out of like bronze. No, no. It's like someone made it out of like wood or some shit like that. It's like, it's painted to look exactly okay. like a goose. And, um, Interesting. yeah, like that, that's one thing that's also kind of cool when you drive across Canada is like, we do still have some of these like legacy largest attraction things and uh, the guest that i had on recently i think two episodes ago uh, henry uh, robido uh he um used to study giant things he called it giant anthropology and he would go on road trips to like seek out these giant things so like there's like a huge giant egg somewhere in saskatchewan um there's like a huge it's like a, a moose or something also in Saskatchewan. Uh, there's the giant goose. They're just like all sorts of giant things. They, 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 there's a giant crab track somewhere, a uh, crab trap somewhere in the Maritimes. Yeah. This is like all, he just did this across Canada? Because he's across, not, going to, he's not going to the States? He went down into the U.S. as well too. There's a, uh, there used okay. to be a giant Sasquatch that he captured but it's still in northern Ontario, and it looks even scarier now. Like, when he showed me photos of it from, like, the late 70s, early 80s, it looks sketchy, but, like, now it looks even sketchier. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking about all these giant things now. I'm sure there's a giant hat somewhere, or a largest, like, cowboy hat, or boots. Absolutely. Or largest pizza i think i remember seeing something about large pizza but i feel like that's not something that sticks around i mean it would be hilarious if someone made like a huge massive like, <laughs> paper mache pizza like world's largest pizza and then build a pizza joint inside of it that would be that'd be a good gimmick <laughs> yeah but, i mean that could be another another project I could I could look forward to doing. <laughs> exactly, but, you, you you could uh, uh, you could do a refresh on his research, and you could be uh, <laughs> you could become the second giant topologist in North America because I believe so far to date uh, Henry is the only giant topologist that exists, maybe in the world. <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> that's funny, man. Yeah, he's um, an interesting cat. He's fun to chat with. Cool. Yeah. I mean, interesting hobby. I can see why he'd want to do it. Let's go traveling. Mm. Well, he yeah. mostly did it as a way to differentiate himself from other photographers out there. Cause, um, when he was trying to make his, his name as a photographer, um, you know, everyone was trying to do the same things and he's like, I'm going to do something really fucking weird that people will remember me for. And, um, yeah, they definitely like remembered the guy that takes photos of giant things. Um, yeah. You know, even still to this day, he's like in his like late seventies ish, somewhere around there, I think. 
And uh, he's like, everyone still knows me for those damn giant things. <laughs> Actually, I realized I, I remember reading, like it was like a blog, like a like an old blog that I don't know if it was like maintained or not. I mean, it was still there, so I guess someone's still paying for it. Anyways, I wish I had a source, but I'll try to find it. It was like a guy blogging or kind of like reminiscing diary about in like the eighties, I think, or nineties, him and his buddies like ripping around in pickup trucks and trying to shoot lightning on film Whoa. or not trying to, but like act shooting like lightning. So chasing thor- storms and chasing like hurricanes and shit like that, bad thunderstorms and shooting a lot of it on slide film to have the best. Sort they of were shooting lightning property. on slide film. I think this is like, this is how I, what I remember from it. Jesus. It was an article, and I just thought it was really cool. I kind of think that would be, that would make for like a cool um, photography based show that only photographers would watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like I have a tough enough time shooting slide film in like ideal conditions. I couldn't imagine trying to shoot slide film when you're trying to like get a thunderstorm or something like that's that's wild. Like I've only mm-hmm. ever caught lightning on film once and it was like a total fluke, uh, lucky accident. I was in Nashville and, uh, there was a crazy storm and I was in like, um, I think it was like 14th or 15th floor of this like motel. And, uh, mm-hmm. the lightning was just like dancing in the Valley in front of the hotel that I was in. I just happened to have like one of those soft um, lens hoods for my 50 mil on my camera. And so I put Mm -hmm. that on the camera and then I was able to like stick it on the glass. So it blocked out all of the light from my room and I could just see like right through the glass and uh, not have any like artifacts coming in from the hotel room. And uh, just kind of, cause I had a bunch of film with me. So I just like, when I heard like the thunder, I just started to like click, 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 click. (laughs) Hoping that I could get like yeah, a lightning yeah, yeah. bolt. Yeah. And I got a couple of good ones. It was really cool. Nice. Yeah, that's one thing I've never gotten on film is lightning. That's That sounds really fun. Because it, 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 it is pretty random at that point. You're just kind of opening it, hoping it catches it. I guess you could bulb it if you wanted to. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Well, I didn't have a tripod with me because I was traveling. So I was like hand holding mm-hmm. it against the glass. And, um, and then, like, I don't know if you remember this from, like, when, when you're a kid, like, counting down the, like, 1-1000, one, 2-1000, 1, 1, like, after you hear the, mm-hmm. the thunder to, like, when the lightning's going to come. Yeah. And so it's like... Right, you're right. You're trying to time it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm just like, okay, what, what's the timing of it like? Because I, I missed a few, and I'm, like, trying to count it out. And it was, it was kind of fun. Like, if you ever get a chance to try and shoot lightning, um, I think you'd have fun with it. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it's got to happen one of these days i guess but hasn't happened yet <laughs> it'll, it'll come up a bit so in your professional stuff then you're doing mostly videography um yeah pretty much mostly videography um i've done some stills basically trying to do more of bts mm. um bts stills on uh either commercial sets or film sets um but I hear it's kind of a hard gig to get into. So, um, you know, I just got to do more of it. It's not a tiny bit, but um, that's something that I would love to do professionally in the future. Um, I just really enjoy it because I understand sets and being on a, on a film set. And um, I think I'm pretty good. I've done event photography and like um, stuff like that a bunch of experience doing that kind of stuff. So I love being a fly on the wall and being a fly on the wall in that setting is like kind of challenging because you gotta be quiet and you gotta make sure you're not in things and <laughs> um, disturbing certain things or areas. Um, yeah, that's something that I really want to do more of. Um, but then day job wise, I'm like AC on a, on a show, you know, um, assisting and C camming basically. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty, pretty challenging and pretty fun. <laughs> pretty rewarding. Um, it's hard work. 
it feels good going to bed when you're physically exhausted. Um, <laughs> I, I guess the biggest it, thing is that you're enjoying it because there, there's so many people out there right now that are in like jobs and careers that um, they don't enjoy particularly, but they're doing them because, you know, we got to eat and we got to pay rent and shit. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I feel pretty grateful that I get to, to do something um, that I enjoy. I mean, yeah, not everybody has that choice, for sure. Ruthless Run says, hi, fellas. I don't know if you, you know them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's me. So you, um, you said you, you're born and raised here in the Lower Mainland then? No, I was born in Korea. Oh, shit. Okay, um, sorry about that. I missed that. No, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> that's all right. I was born in Korea and then um, grew up here. But I moved here when I was three, so pretty much only really know here. I've been back to Korea a bunch, but it's not like, uh, there is like roots vibes, but not like, Oh, this is my hometown vibes. Mm. Yeah. That's wild. Um, which, which part of, uh, like Korea were you in? Um, uh, born in Seoul. And then, oh, nice. um, like my dad's family, the majority is like from there and are still kind of, there or very close and then my mom's side is um, originally from Seoul as well but like pretty early on they all sort of migrated to the island there's an island on the southern tip of Korea of South Korea oh, okay um, and that's where like my mom's side of the family is that's where like my grandparents are buried um, on my mom's side and, yeah is that, her, family's, her family's all still there. Is that down towards like Busan then? Um, it's called Jeju Island. Oh, um, I've heard of Jeju it, Island, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's where they are. Yeah, my, my friend Dong Young, he um, has a real penchant for Jeju pies. <laughs> oh, okay. Pies? Yeah, it's like his favorite snack or something. <laughs> Um, okay. He, he's yeah. a funny cat. I got. You know, I'm just thinking about now, I, and I have to go visit him because I haven't seen him in a while. But he got all, he got all excited because he found out we were born in the same year. So he was like, "Oh, Chingu!" Like, <laughs> <we're> <laughs> <buddies>. nice. <laughs> and his, his um, wife's a little bit of a vegetarian, so whenever we hang out, I always make sure to take him out for like fried chicken or something because like he misses that. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, he probably doesn't get any of that. But now, now there's like so many vegan chicken options, though. So I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, there, there's so many great options, but like he still misses. He's like, oh, can we get meat? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. We can go get some. He's a funny cat. Nice. Yeah, and in Vancouver, too, there's just like so much good food, man. It's, it's I've been talking about this like with my coworkers a lot, but yeah, so much good food in, in Vancouver. Yeah, there, there really is. Like it's, um, I like eating out a lot, and there's a lot of like interesting joints here in Vancouver. Um, <laughs> Ruthless Run says I am the fried chicken king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like uh, like um, Chinatown has so many like great spots too, and like yeah, we're yeah, um, yeah. we're pretty lucky here in Vancouver. Like I um, yeah, man, I think so. A kick out of it. Um, I, I did get to yeah. spend, uh, I think we were there for like two weeks. Uh, we were in Seoul uh, for most of it. Oh, really? We did like um, two or three nights in Busan. It was when Do Young was getting married. We flew out there for their wedding. And uh, that, that was a really oh, interesting okay. experience seeing like the, the Korean sort of wedding machine at work. <laughs> it was kind of wild. Yeah. We went to this like, office looking building kind of thing but it was like a marriage building and it was just like all of these floors of like different wedding venues and it was almost like going to like 
I don't know, McDonald's and you're waiting in line or something. And it's just like, okay, now it's your turn to go get married. And like everyone goes in. It's like, okay, ceremony's over. Go up here for this thing. And it was a really interesting experience. Yeah. I don't remember the last wedding I went to in Korea, but yeah, this is probably pretty intense. <laughs> um, do you see like their like Korean garb, like the traditional wear and stuff? Yeah, so we, we did probably get, have different setups, right? We did get to see the traditional only because we were like friends or of or like close closer family kind of thing. So it's like the mm-hmm. regular wedding ceremony was like more of like a North American style. And then when they were moving everyone to go to the reception while they were getting that all set up, the family went off to this like other room and did the traditional one where they got all dressed up in that stuff. And uh, that was really interesting seeing that ceremony. And then cool. um we went into this like cafeteria hall where there was, I think there was like a timer that was like counting down, like how much time we had for the reception before we had to get out for the next reception. It was kind of wild. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And the food there was like fucking deadly. Like so much good Thanks. food there. Yeah. If you stick to like the green food stuff, I think you'd probably be doing pretty good. But I remember having, Vietnamese noodles there with my mom and it was like the worst thing I'd ever tasted. I was so depressed. There's like so much shame and also like upsetness from not getting what I wanted to eat at all. Like not even close. I've I've never heard anyone talk about having shame about ordering something that goes so bad wrong. Like why are you trying this? Then don't even make this. Like it was and it was packed. Like, the place was packed. Merlin, there was not an empty table. It was packed. So, so it I was tasted, the only one that thought anything was up, I guess. That's kind of messed up. The one thing I really anyway. did about uh, the, of the places we went was there was a lot of, like, they make you cook your own food thing, but then you actually get excited about cooking your own food, and you're like, this is amazing. I get to cook my own food. And they're like, ha, 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 we pay. <laughs> like, we're getting your money to just basically give you raw materials and then you do all of the work. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's different, right? Because, like, the whole mentality of food, like, eating out is different there. Like, I mean, tipping is not a thing. Tipping is a thing here. But like the mentality of like, you know, gratuity included beyond mm. parties of six, 20%, 25% or you're a jackass yeah, or like whatever. And I'm, I'm, I'm not bad mouthing the service industry. I don't want people to come to me about that. <laughs> but like it, I, I've, I've served before at restaurants um, and I've worked in kitchens and I've washed dishes before. So like I have like a little bit of credibility in saying this, but like I do think it's unhealthy uh, even for like employees in the service industry here to like have this mindset of that because now you're like, you're letting your day get ruined by something that doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means. If this person tips 10% or this person tips 15%, especially if you don't know that, like if you're not the knowledge that it doesn't exist everywhere, like this, this idea of expectation. So I don't know. I'm talking about this a lot. I think they should just like, give them a proper wage so they don't have to rely on living off of tips because like yeah, that's exactly. that's like a huge scam right there is like you know yeah. people that own these establishments where it's like oh instead of paying you a living wage i'm going to pay you like bare minimum and then you have to live off the graciousness of other people like you know that's and it was funny there was a few times where i wasn't thinking and i just like left extra and got chased with the money a few times. They're like, you forgot money. (laughs) They were kind of upset Mm -hmm. about it, which was kind of interesting. And it was also different how like eating there. I also noticed was, was a lot more like social and like collaborative because like, you know, you're kind of all sitting around like, you know, the the barbecue or if you're doing like a fried rice joint, you're sitting around like a big pan kind of thing. And like, everyone's kind of like, you know, working and cooking food and it was a lot more fun than you know some of the dinners i've had here where it's just like you sort of just sit and have like idle chit chat with people and then you're just like waiting for your food to show up and (laughs) just so you could get out of there kind of thing yeah 
Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, it's the way that the food's designed to, I do feel like it's changing a little here. There's like lots of like tapas Mm -hmm. sort of idea places. And then obviously COVID threw in massive wrench into that sort of scene. Um, But um, yeah, it's just the way that uh, I feel like North American cuisine is designed sort of, you know, you have your, your plate. And yeah, it's very individual. <laughs> it's like, no, this is my food. No, you get away. Yeah. Like, get your yeah. own food. And it's like, sometimes it's nice to have your own meal, but it's also a lot more fun to like share. Like, I, I enjoy like communal meals a lot more, um, especially if you're out with like a group of people, because then you can try a bit of everything. You can get some different stuff in there. And mm-hmm. I don't know, just it, I kind of find those outings. Um, more engaging than like a, like a traditional kind of meal. Um, I could also yeah. be oh, yeah. crazy. I think so too. I mean, every now and then, you know, I don't mind going to Outback Steakhouse or something, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, who doesn't love a blooming onion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I, I won't lie. I, I get curious about those places too sometimes. And I've been thinking um, I need to go make like my like once every couple of decade trip to the old spaghetti factory. <laughs> Just <Yeah. laughs> get some spumoni or something. Yeah. Got to get the yeah. spumoni. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's For been sure. a while. So what, what would yeah, be man. one of your favorite joints in Vancouver that like you if pe- friends were visiting, you'd recommend or you'd want to like take them to like, what's what, a couple of your go-to joints? Um, used to go a lot to Chinatown. I live like, I live back out in Langley now. So I don't go out in van as often, but, um, Chinatown a lot for sure. There's a diamond bar. That place is really good cocktail. Yeah, the, in, in Gastown, Gastown, the diamond's so good, yeah. The diamond, yeah. And then they had like that cool like little off shoot bar thing, like the elk room, I think it was called. Yeah. Something. Like a bar within a bar. Oh, um I used to go to local a lot. That place is, is fun. It's also right in Gastown. Anywhere in Gastown. There's lots of good places. There's so many good spots in Gastown. <laughs> Asian fusion stuff happening. Um, but what I was going to say is I saw something recently about a burger place, sort of like a modernized looking burger place in Yale Town, I think. And then they've got like a hideaway bar. Oh, I haven't crazy. been there, but I wanted to go. I want to know more about that. <laughs> I, I haven't heard of that one, but there's an interesting joint at um, where Mammy Taylor's used to be in Chinatown. That is okay, like, Georgia. Like, yeah, Gore? it's right or across Georgia. from Phnom, uh, Phnom Penh. Um, yes, yeah. My friend used to live in a building there before it got demoed and uh, rebuilt. Yeah, I know, nice. I know that that bar, like right, right beside it, actually. Yeah. yeah. So it it used to be Mammy Taylor's, but now it's some kind of like it looks like a dumpling shop. But then, if you ask for the okay. right menu item, you go into a secret bar in the back. Oh, okay. And and it's kind of funny easy, because right? like, well, <laughs> it, it isn't though. Cause like I sat there one day just watching like people come in and it was hilarious. People are like looking at their phones and they see it's the address and they're like, Hey, like I'm, I'm here to go to the bar and meeting some friends. And the person at the dumpling bar is like, what bar? We just sell dumplings here. Like, you know, the, these are our only menu options. And we do have some <laughs> beer. Like we, we have like a couple of beers and a cider. They're like, no, like, I'm supposed to meet my friends at this bar and they're like, no, this is, this is just dumplings. And then they like walk away confused and like look at some, and they're oh, like, hilarious. this is the address my friends sent me. They said they're here and they're like, no, <laughs> this isn't a bar. <laughs> and then sometimes they have to coach them. They're like, it's like doing this. yeah, they go in circles with it. And then when they're kind of getting tired of the person not getting it, they're like, look at the menu how many menu items are there? And you ask for the one that's not on the menu. So it's like, 
I think there's like six or seven menu items. So you ask for like, oh, I want like the number seven or number eight because it's not on the menu. And then they're like, oh, welcome. You can come in now. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Who comes up with these things? I don't know, but it's hilarious because like the, the lady I was talking to, she's like, it's so much fun messing with people because like they just, they get, no, I bet. they get so frustrated. They're like, no, this is the place. And they're like, I don't, I don't <laughs> know, man. Like, do you want some dumplings? We got dumplings. They're good. <laughs> that's hilarious they're just trolling everyone that doesn't really know that's a great troll yeah, uh, yeah. Langley's kind of yeah. nice though right I've never actually spent a ton of it's, time in Langley <laughs> it's fine um, <laughs> never fine if you say that um, yeah man it's, I don't know I grew up in Langley I spent like eight or, eight or the odd nine years I think in Van um, but my childhood was in Langley so it's like it's very Pleasantville mixed with a lot of 50s cars mm. mixed with um, like the odd Trump supporter and mixed with you know old sort of suburbs I don't know it's nice and it's relatively quiet I always, one thing that like, it sounds so small, but it's not at all is just driving in Langley compared to driving in the city and like, God bless Langley. If you drive a car, because it's just, it's not just crazy like you can looking. park anywhere. Mm. There's no pay parking anywhere. Like <laughs> there's room. You don't have to like plan ahead and stuff like that. Based on what you, like it's easier to walk in Vancouver, right? bike than it is to drive because mm-hmm. you just get absolutely skewered for parking did you know that did you know that it's 12 dollars an hour right now to park on those meters along broadway and like can be what like where all that construction is kind of like by like the cactus club and like henry's photos right there oh, i think just... it's, i think it was 12 dollars an hour that's ruthless for meter parking <laughs> I just, I <laughs> well i i've noticed that in some places so it's like i i was a few minutes late getting the chat going because i had to move my car from one place to another because uh the studio that i usually broadcast out of um vancouver mural fest has um seconded our parking lot for a party that they're throwing so we have no parking right now until maybe later this month so we're having to do street parking and there's like a really fucking expensive private lot right behind the motel or you can try and find street parking but the street parking has a two-hour limit so you have to like fucking play the move your car around dance and uh oh, the worst man i hate it. but at least it was only like two bucks for out here but then i've noticed sometimes when i go to rocket repro the parking meters around there are like 650 an hour or something it's just like fuck why yeah that's kind of an expensive area too yeah, god yeah. bless rocket repro though oh they're great i i, I like I love, those guys love those guys when i don't send my film yeah when i don't send my film to toronto for downtown camera i usually use rocket repro nice yeah i have a bag of film right now that's slowly growing i need to get to rocket repro <laughs> Nice. These guys are awesome. I think their their prints are just like the best. I don't really know what secret sauce, but it's, I don't know. You can get prints, in my opinion, for like 35 millimeter prints. And they do everything, right? They do larger prints. They do like fine art paper and like um, canvas stuff and all that. Like different, different printing uh, mediums and stuff, but yeah, 35 mil. They're like, the colors are just the best. They have all these options. Martin's a nice guy. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I haven't used them for prints yet, but that's definitely something I've got to do soon. Oh, okay, man, yeah. They're, like, yeah, that's something that I really look forward to when I develop my film, especially for 35 millimeter. Um, it's just getting my Rocket Reaper prints. <laughs> they're the bomb. Um, it's kind of 
far, but yeah, I still go there because I could go to like one in drugs or something and get, you know, just develop and scan on myself, but definitely worth going on. Yeah, but London Drugs um, also is kind of disappointing these days. Hmm? It, London Drugs has kind of become a bit disappointing these days for stuff. They just they don't they don't uh, focus as much on the film stuff as they used to. Yeah, I noticed uh, couldn't find any film out of London Drugs recently. Um, it was like in the interior. They didn't have what I was looking for. The one in Kamloops has uh, has an okay selection of film. Oh, do you do you know any like good places for like just photography stuff and film in general in the interior? I'm like spending a lot of time up there recently. Which, which part of the like, interior? I don't know, like Kamloops area and stuff like that. Um. Well, Kamloops probably the best spot to get film there. Ironically, is London Drugs. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, like every time I've gone there to pick up stuff, like when, when I'm visiting like family or whatever and I want to pick up something for my niece or nephew, um, I popped in and they, they have an okay selection of film. Like they've got a bunch of Ilford there, a little bit of Kodak. Mm-hmm. Um, they even have like some of the Ilford um, reusable and disposable cameras too, which was a bit surprising. Um, oh, yeah. It'll look funky. And some Polaroid there too. So London Drugs, I th- I think they're the only film one there. And uh, mm. I, I haven't spent time in Cologne in a long time, so I'm not sure what would be out there. You could also try, like, I don't think he carries much fresh film, but you can um, find, like, if you're looking for camera parts or anything, if you're in Kamloops, uh, there's Enman's camera in the North Shore and John Enman is uh, the proprietor there, and uh, he's a really great guy. Um, he's been, I, I've been talking to him since I first started getting into uh, photography stuff, like way, way back in the day. So uh, you can sometimes catch him down here in Vancouver, too. He comes down regularly to uh, the camera shows that happen down here. Okay, like the Richmond Swap? Yeah, he was at the Richmond Swap, and then he does that one that Tanchi does twice a year at the uh, Ukrainian Cultural Center. Oh, okay, that's not, not the same thing, I guess. But. Yeah, there, it's two different ones. Uh, so Tanchi does the ones at the Ukrainian Cultural Center, and then I think the guy that does the Richmond ones, like Big Dan or something like that. Okay. He always wears, like, coveralls. It's like a... Big Asian dude in coveralls, and it always makes me imagine if they like did like real life Super Mario Brothers, but like, <laughs> like, like I'm a farmer coveralls, or like I'm a bug spraying hazard suit coveralls. Bug spraying like hazard suit, kind of like the. <laughs> Are those overalls? I, I can't. I always get those mixed up. Coveralls and overalls that. No, no, those are those are coveralls. Overalls okay. are the farmer one. Yeah, he's a funny guy. He's he's really nice. Speaking of really nice, nice. guys, Tim Ryugu just joined us from uh, Kodak. What's up, Tim? <laughs> Hi, Tim. <laughs> Min here is a huge lover of Tri-X and Portra 800, and uh, he loves using <laughs> them on his film projects, you know. If if you ever have yeah. someone that needs to test stuff out, you should uh, you should hit him up, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't hate that at all. No, <laughs> definitely shoot a lot of Kodak. <laughs> no. it, it's one of my favorite. I I like Kodak too. I have a big soft spot for them. When I'm not shooting Polaroid, it's usually Kodak. So, hmm. yeah, I've seen some of your Polaroid stuff, Merlin. It's really dope. Thanks, man. I've never really shot Polaroids, but yeah, it's cool we can do with that stuff. Well, if you're around in Vancouver this weekend, and this is an open invitation for anyone, the Vancouver Mural Fest is having the grand opening of the City Center Lodge, which is where my studio is uh, at uh, 2111, uh, or yeah, 2111 Main Street, Vancouver, across from Cardam's Donuts. And so Saturday and Sunday, we're having open studios and a bunch of stuff going on. 
and uh, I'm going to be doing uh, pack film portraits on my four by five um, with one of those like laser background high school portrait things. <laughs> so that, that'll oh, be kind cool. of funny thing. So yeah, right. if if you're uh, if you're looking for something to do on the weekend, come on down to the city center uh, artist lodge. Yeah, I should go. I I would. I wish I could go. I'm going camping this weekend, but. Um, dang. <laughs> no really fun. And Tim says to DM him, so you should you should send Tim a message. Give him a follow and send him a message. Right on, Tim. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. But I remembered you had a hard stop for six, so um, I just want to throw. Was there um, any last? sort of sentiments, comments, things you'd like to say to anyone before uh, we wrap up here? Um, no, thanks for having me on. I was just looking forward to kind of getting to chat with you, to be honest. <laughs> like we kind of <laughs> started talking a while ago and never had a chance to kind of properly link up and, and chat. So, um, yeah, I mean, watch Merlin's shows and, <laughs> um, you can follow me if you want, but, um, not posting a ton lately. Um, I am still shooting quite a bit of film, but my rate of scanning has slowed down considerably. Um, I'm usually working, uh, I, I work away from home right now, so not home a ton, but yeah. Well, I'm, for having me, really. I'm glad we were able to connect. Cause yeah, we did talk about maybe doing like a photo walk or something sometime too. Still totally open to that. So when work gets less busy yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, we can catch up. For sure. Yeah, that sounds really good. Let's do that. Cool, man. Well, thanks for popping in. I'm going to have uh, Mr. Yeah, Mocha walk us out here. Um, and again, it was great. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, next week, we're going to have uh, Ryan Ackerberg on here. Um, looking forward to chatting with him. And, uh, you know, have a good week out there, everyone. Hope you stay safe. And uh, we'll see you next week. Cheers, man. Thank you.